All right, now we're going to be looking at making a biped. And we're going to be using Z spheres for it. Before I just kind of went through Z spheres as an abstract form maker, now we're going to be looking at it a little bit differently in the fact that we have this root. Where do we place it in the character? Another thing I do is always make my brush size really small because it gives me the option of being able to make a full range of z-sphere. Okay, so I'm going to make it really small and turn on symmetry x. Okay, so this is a root. Okay, and that root, I'm just going to scale it back just a little bit. It goes in the waist of the character. At least for my workflow, it goes in the waist. Now I've seen a put it in oh, the head but I'll show you why that technically shouldn't be there because uh, the posability of the creature or the the ability to adjust the posture of the creature becomes a little awkward when this thing is in the head so let's look at this think of this as waist midline upper torso neck and head okay and you just gotta use your imagination with these spheres think of one of those maybe drawing mannequins for a minute alright now since everything is based upon the root you can see that pivoting is a little bit easier. Let's say if I'm developing a, a posture for this creature. Okay. I can very quickly adjust that posture as need be. And then if I hit A, I can immediately like, go into it. I'm also going to take the adaptive skin level down one. That way I can see just the raw Z spheres and turn on polyframe and it'll make it so it's very incredibly low poly and I can keep this uniformity very nicely at this level Okay, so one thing you do have to know though, when you draw something at a, a lower res, see this how it pinches in the back right now? Okay, I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. See how it still pinches? The front's good. Okay, with the density of 2 on there, I'm going to use Alt to delete these and redraw them in. See how technically with two in place at first these do not pinch. And this becomes something of a battle to preserve the integrity of the mesh. You have to kind of move around things so that, so that pinchage goes away. We can always reduce this later to one, but it's so much easier to kind of keep it at two till the very end and then move it to one. I just wanted to show you that, you know, why we do it or why things work the way it does. Sometimes you don't have an answer for that. It's just like not in the ZBrush Bible, the unwritten book. Sure, there's a wiki, but I don't think 
too many things are covered like that. Um, so I like to come out with a couple of these spheres here and then draw down. Scale out and just move this down. And if you need to add some height to the character, that's how it's done. Notice if I try to pull here, okay, it doesn't like that. And what it does is it just relaxes the shoulders. This is a new feature with the Z spheres. So to get this to pull down, I had to pull down the root and then pull down its children. Okay, and you can always already see that the posture of the character is kind of jacked. So this is where you can start rotating this stuff. but rotated in a fashion that keeps a uniform mesh. Anytime that it looks like I cannot keep a uniform to mesh, I'll sacrifice posture for later and use the transpose tool to actually repair the posture. In this case, this looks really nice in the back. This looks kind of pinched. So I'm going to be moving this around until I see something nice. And sometimes that has to do with doing this. That works. The worst thing about these spheres is sometimes, you know, when you get these extraordinary vertices in this area, see how like this area comes in as one, two, three, four, five, five edges all going into the same polygon structure. That becomes a, technically a difficulty to get the, the right muscle tones in there. So that's what I'm trying to avoid with these spheres is that weird extraordinary vertice on the one side and if you get it too close this is what happens so you have to kind of sacrifice do you want it there do you want it here and certainly if it's going to be a complete pain I can turn this character around altogether and start thinking of it as well all I do is have to what, rotate the arms <laughs> fix the posture this way and technically the good side is now in the front so just some tips another thing you want to do is stay away from um, a non-relaxed form so here you can see that this starts to curve in a little bit, so it drops and then starts to rotate just a smidge. Uh, a lot of times that will be kind of a pain to work with sometimes, so that's a little bit better, but not much. There we go. So it's just all in the minute changes in Z spheres that these things get uh, fixed up. And I am very picky about my beginning base mesh even more so than some I've seen. Just I know if the base mesh is good uh, sculpting becomes a lot easier on it. 
all right so meet me in the next video where i can kind of add some more to this and uh show you some cool features here in zbrush 4.